Now, what are the implications for our brain? <clears throat> Early this morning, Zaya was kind enough to offer her brain for the purpose of this investigation. <clears throat> and here is Zaya's very pristine brain living in our three plus one dimensional space, which is where we believe our brains like to live. But this is just really the boundary of a higher dimensional space. And by the way, we're already assuming in my talk <clears throat> that the brain is quantum mechanical, meaning there are quantum effects or quantum correlations relating distant parts of the brain, even that's, if that's inside a single neuron. But if that is true, then from the perspective of holographic duality, from the perspective of this higher dimensional internal space, those in quantum entanglements, all quantum effects, in fact, in the brain, are described by strings and wormholes that develop on those strings. So in other words, for example, entangled microtubules within our neurons or any quantum effects involving entanglement within the brain can be explained in terms of and are identical to strings in higher dimensional, four plus one dimensional space time. Which leads us to this conclusion. Quantum effects like quantum entanglement in the brain are <clears throat> identical to or dual to quantum gravity and string theory. If one is true, if quantum mechanics are there, the other is true. If quantum mechanics is relevant to the brain, then string theory and unified field theory are equally relevant. That is, if the roots of human consciousness extend to the quantum mechanical level, then they extend all the way to the unified field. That would mean that consciousness is fundamentally a phenomenon of the unified field.